to bring you just to summarize so far, we had the, we, every example starts off with a pairs of numbers represented by X and Y called the independent variable and the dependent variable. And the assumption of the chapter, among other things, is that the X and Y are related in a linear way, meaning if you graph them, it can be a straight line, will sort of fit, be a good summary of the data. The numbers I've been using throughout the whole chapter, one, two, three, four, four, six, two, five, something like that. Were those the numbers? Were those the numbers that we used last time and the time before that? Yeah. I think so. If anybody thinks otherwise. I may, I may, I may have put these, did I put them in a different order? Four, six, two, five. I put them in the order. Doesn't make, of course, the, 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 the order doesn't make any difference because you're just taking the sums of these columns. And of course, you'd have to calculate for purposes of the, all the other formulas, in fact, the next three formulas, x squared and y squared, and more especially, more importantly, getting the sums of those columns, so the sum of the x, the sum of the y, the sum of the xy, the sum of the x squared, the sum of the y squared. This is 10, this is 17, this is 48, this is 30, and this is 81, I hope, if I remember, remember this correctly. The next thing we did is we, well, that we did, the, what we should have done first is to graph these numbers, X and Y. In this case, it was advertising and sales represented the, the idea being that the more advertising you put into a company, the more sales you're going to get. So the advertising sales, a good scale for this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2. nine at some point. And the first one on the x, two on the y, three on the x, four on the y, four on the x, six on the y is here, and two on the x, five on the y is here. And we figured a good straight line that fits the data might be something like this. And we said last time that the equation that represents that straight line, which in general is b0 plus b1x, which should be related to the original y equals mx plus b. It's the same exact equation with using different symbols. In this case, after doing the calculation for the formula for b1, there was a formula for B0. We figured out that the equation was 1.5, and we also guessed this number, 1.5, which is where it, the intercept is, plus a slope slightly bigger than a 45 degree line, so it's 1.1x turned out to be the right answer. We also calculated how close the dots are to the straight line, called the SYX last time. SYX, we also able to, since it has a very concrete interpretation, and we have a picture, we might as well guess the answer. We did, and I think Kelvin, in fact, was the person who guessed is around one, and it came out to exactly 1.16, after plugging it into the formula, which was today's homework. I think that pretty much brings us up to date on what we covered so far in chapter. Am I leaving anything out? And then we started talking last time when I ran out of time. We'll start it again, because it's so important. The next thing, the fourth or the fifth thing we're doing in this chapter is to, to answer the, in fact, it's probably the main part of the chapter, are X and Y related? Because if they're not related, the entire chapter makes no sense. So at some point, you have to answer the question, are they really related in a particular, are they related according to a straight line, as opposed to, this, is, this here, the X and Y are related, but they're not related according to a straight line. So we're just trying to figure out if the X and Y has a straight line or a linear relationship. And we said last time that because the answer will be yes or no, it's very likely that we're going to do this by hypothesis testing. And in fact, we will. And because it's hypothesis testing, there's going to be four steps. The first step being write down, writing down the hypotheses. And first, I'll write it down in English. Then we'll write it down in mathematical symbols, x and y not related. Usually, the, the a0, like the null, x and y are related. But now, the, what we got, when I ran out of time last time, is how do you say that mathematically? And in order to do that, I have to really explain the theory, the underlying theory of the chapter. Marco? No, no. If you go back to chapter 12, for example, uh, where we had a very similar idea, because there, instead of having two variables that were continuous, we had two variables that were categorical, like uh, the sex variable along the side of the page and the pass or fail variable along the top of the page. There were two categorical variables. The A0 there was the X and Y. At the, the two variables are not related. So it is consistent. And the reason for that is that the X0 usually represents nothing's happening. Like everything's cool, no problem, nothing new, is, nothing exciting is happening. X and Y are not related. Um, when the, the other examples of hypothesis testing that we had uh, back in chapter 
I don't know, starting in chapter 9, 8, 0, mu equal 4.5 versus mu not equal to 4.5. So in a sense, mu equal 4.5 is saying that the random number table is okay. There's nothing, nothing, nothing strange about it. So, so I mean, it's, usually the, the bottom line is the 8, 0 represents the, the status quo, so to speak, that nothing's happening, and the H1 is something's happening. Good question, and this should be, this should be, and if you had your name out, I'd be giving you a piece of, a piece of paper for the question, because it was a good question. Okay, um, now, so the question, so if you would have the scattergram between, at, let's, let's, again, let's, this is, uh, this is X, this is sales, this is, this is in the sample. Focus. This is an important, again, like always, you can, you can tune out for the theory, but then when, it, when, I, when, you, when I start doing the calculations, it's not going to make too much sense to you, and it's a good chance you'll mess it up on a test. So please make an attempt to understand the theory as well as just the actual practical calculations. We do all our calculations based on a sample, okay? Um, and if, in fact, if, in fact, the X and Y are not related, what would you have expected the slope to be? Now, we talked about that at the beginning of the chapter, but it's certainly worthwhile talking about it again. If the X and Y are truly not related, what kind of scattergram would you expect to have? And the answer is, let's scan. If X and Y, I can put that here, X and Y not related, you'd have a scattergram like this, a dot here all over the place, some low with low, high with high, low with high, high with low. So the question is, and I think Algie was, I think you were raising your hand, what would be the slope of a, if you try to fit, if you plug these pairs of numbers into a computer, and what, what number do you expect to come out of it, Algio? Very good, so the answer is, no name, but good answer. Okay. Oh, there it is, I want to see it, okay. Uh, try to write a little bit darker next time. I want to pass it to Algio, please. Um, the answer, and I hope everybody else realizes, it will be a slope of zero, and it's true for a lot of reasons. First of all, as x gets bigger, what happens to the y? The y doesn't change. Well, x getting bigger and the y not changing means x and y are not related. Or another way of saying that, if the slope is zero, zero times x is zero, that means the x drops out of the equation. So that's another way of saying the x is not really related to the y. So either way you look at it, the slope of zero. So if algebra is correct, you might want to put, you might think that the proper way of putting down the hypothesis testing that x and y are not related is that we expect the slope to be zero, and if they are related, it'll be the opposite, which is not zero. And if you put that down on the test, you'll be basically right, but I would still take off a couple of points for an important reason. Anybody say, what can, anybody can criticize this answer while it's basic, uh, captures the main part of it, it's technically wrong. What's wrong with that? Yes. Okay, yes. No, no, you can have, uh, if, you have a, if you have a scattergram like this, I don't know, and the slope is infinite, I mean, that can't, that can't what does it mean? For every x, again, the y is all over the place. The truth is, I mean, for, for a particular x, y is all over the place. You can't, there's no relationship between the x and the y. So you might argue that the answer to Al, the question that Algebra answered correctly is zero. Maybe you should say a vertical line, but then, but x is not moving. I mean, in real life, the x's are all over the place. So this is, makes a lot more sense than that. Yes. No, it does have to be in order for, oh, I'm sorry, say again. Okay, so you're getting very, very hot. You're very, very close to the right answer. In fact, it is the right answer, but I need to, you have to say to drop more precisely. Joe, you want to? Uh, you don't need to be, the B0 is irrelevant. In other words, the B1, B0 would be, again, think about it. I don't care if I make it here. As long as it's horizontal line, it's indicating that the X and Y are not related. But what Nick said is correct, and I uh, want to pass it back to Joe, please. Yes. I'm going to say it has to be close to zero, but it's out close to zero, so you probably need, like, Okay, so, okay. So, so, so that's not the mistake, but that, again, that's, that, that's very, very warm or hot. So let me just, um, let me just um, elaborate on what you two guys just said. If I, let's go back to chapter nine, the first time we saw hypothesis testing, we spent a lot of time on that. Let's say I put down for hypothesis testing, chapter nine, of one sample, I say put eight zero, x bar equals four point five, h one, x bar not equal to four point five. Now that's basically correct, but what's wrong about this? Yeah. 